Hello and welcome to a video with me, Raindell. Today, we'll take a look at the raid mechanic in War of the Vision, how it works and uh, how to leverage it to the best of uh, your account's ability. Um, and this video might be a little too late for the current Diabolos raid because I know a lot of people have already been working on it and half the duration is passed, but I think it's going to stay relevant for all incoming raids because uh, realistically, they're not changing this game mechanic. So uh, it's going to stay relevant basically as long as War of the Vision lives. So with that said, uh, first, I want to touch why you would raid. Um, it's one of the game modes in War of the Vision. That's the most um, highly despised by some players, and then some other players really enjoy it. So I guess it depends. Um, but the main reason you would want to do raids is because it gives you access to top tier equipment. Every raid introduces one new piece of equipment uh, that is usually the best of its type or the best in its specific niche. They're all UR equipment pieces. Um, and then it also has access to recipes and materials for two uh, equipment pieces from previous raids that you can get and potentially max by doing the, the current one. Uh, so don't stress it if you can't max a piece during the one week duration uh, that is one of the raids, because you'll be able to finish those equipments some other time. Now, um, I personally find raids to be interesting, especially the early part where I try to build a team that can actually tackle it uh, correctly. Uh, it's a fun team building challenge to try to make it work with the with my account has. Um, and it also improves game knowledge. A lot of raid characters have uh, capabilities that are very different from uh, other characters and other uh, monsters in the game. So you have to study them and then uh, really study your characters in depth to understand how they can tackle the raid. Uh, so it's a good opportunity to get to know your characters better and uh, possibly discover new things about what your account can actually do. Uh, with that said, let's jump in game. Raids last for one week. I think that's the first thing there is to say. When a raid is available, you'll have the logo right there in the upper left corner of the home screen, and you're also able to access it through the far plane, where you can go in there and then uh, take on the current raid. So if I click on it, it will bring me to the raid screen. And I don't want to go too deep into all the buttons and what they do. Uh, you can probably figure that out on your own. Uh, but what I do want to say is you can check out the rewards here by clicking on it. And when you, there's a lot of categories here, but what you really need to know is uh, the higher level the boss that you defeat, the more rewards you get. And if you are going to be defeating uh, bosses to try to get all the uh, materials to build an item, you need to tackle bosses that are at least at the um, level 60, because that's where they begin dropping those materials, unless you get the rare drops. And those materials are also needed for the, uh, the raid item. So you need bosses of 60 and above if you want this. Uh, and then when I'm farming raids, I aim to defeat bosses that are 91 and over because they give three of those materials and typically they end up being my largest bottleneck when building materials. Uh, there are also ranking rewards depending on how much raid points you get. Uh, my advice would be stay away from that. Some players want to really go for high ranks, it's their uh, fun, that's fine. Uh, but I've farmed raids a lot, and I say enough to have maxed out equipments of all the raids, and I've never made it above the two to 3,000 mark. So uh, if you want to go there, prepare to sacrifice an entire week of work or something uh, to get there. It seems like it's insanely an insanely high investment from my perspective. So with that said, you get rewards every time you beat the bus. Um, and then those rewards that you get, you're going to use in the Mog Shop, in the Raid Shop. So let's take a look at this shop here, just quickly, so that you know what you're getting out of the raid. Uh, the first thing is the recipes. So the new item that's uh, newly available will also be, always be the first one here. And then you'll have other items from previous raids that you can get recipes for as well. Um, I'm not going to cover equipment crafting here, but I'll just quickly say you need a total of 63 recipes to max out and piece of equipment in War of the Vision. 
Uh, so you never have enough recipes while the raid is featured to actually make two maxed out pieces. You can build a, a plus five and then a plus four if you'd like, but you can't go above that. Now you also get some uh, character leveling materials and then all the materials that you would need to craft said items are there. So these are all materials that are used for one of the three um, equipments that are featured on top. Um, so, and then you have access to some energy restores and a couple different things. But really, the main thing you get out of this raid shop is the materials needed to craft the item that you get. It's tailored towards giving access to UR equipment. Um, if you want to know how much materials you need, uh, there are resources on the internet for that, but you can also go into equipment. Once you've bought one of the recipes, uh, you are able to click on, say, the Galmia code, which is the item that's featured in this specific raid. And then from there, uh, you can go all the way to plus five, and you'll see all the materials you need. So 63 recipes, almost 2,000 of this, a little over 3,000 of this, and then 630 of those, plus the materials needed to enhance them all the way to uh, their level uh, to... to basically get all the requirements. So you need to add up the top section and the bottom section. So it's actually a little bit above that in all those materials. So if you're thinking that you're getting, say, three of those a run, well, yeah, you're going to be there for uh, 200 or so runs. And then you're getting 20 of those a run. So that's also going to take a long while. So crafting a maxed out raid equipment piece takes a lot of runs. Uh, but fortunately, you can use the medals that you're getting as rewards to get those materials faster and not just use the ones that you gain every time you successfully complete a raid. So we've spoken about the uh, what you get and uh, the rewards, but how do you actually fight the raid? Uh, because I think that's what people are uh, probably interested to see. Well, the first thing is you need to spawn raid encounters. Uh, that happens naturally as you spend energy in the game. So for every 18 or so, depending on the raid, energy that you spend, you're going to spawn one, spawn one encounter. You can do that through skip tickets as well, but if you do, uh, don't spend more than uh, 20 energy at a time or so, because um, it will only spawn once per time you skip. So even if you were to skip for 120 energy, you're still going to get only one raid encounter out of it. So uh, let's go ahead and spawn one so I can show you how it goes. So I'm just going to skip. 24, that's a little bit over 20, I'm basically guaranteed to have a raid encounter at that point. So I'm skipping it, great. Now getting my rewards, that's nice and all. And now you'll see that a raid boss has appeared. Uh, raid bosses, you can spawn up to 10 at a time that are going to queue up and then you can challenge them back to back. Uh, any more than that will not spawn as long as you have 10 that are queued. And then they have a timer. Uh, before they expire. And if you have 10 queued, well, their first one will expire, but you'll still have nine others that are queued. Uh, be wary of this, because if you do them in several runs, and you have one that's almost dead, and then the timer runs out, you're going to lose that run. So you'll have to start over with the, the next raid. Um, so let's click on challenge now, because that's where uh, we want to go. So it's going to take me back to the uh, the raid page, uh, and I just want to go from there because that's probably where you're going to go. So I'm in the raid page that we've saw or we've seen previously. I can click challenge. That gets me to the same place here. Now I'm already at a level 100 Diabolos, but the way this works is the first time it spawns, he's going to be level one. He's going to have less HP, and all his stats are going to be reduced. Uh, the second one, second one, going to be level two. Third one, level three all the way to level 100, where you have the strongest uh, team that you can, uh, well, the strongest boss, basically. You'll also get better rewards as you uh, fight higher level bosses. And when you challenge those, there are several ways to do that. You can bring a team of your own with four different units. You can also do a multiplayer match with uh, one other player, with like two players using each two units. Uh, but I don't recommend going for this game mode because people who do multis usually are not prepared for it. So they're going to be like, what? I need two units? Uh, typically they have one unit that they're ready to bring into the raid. 
Uh, so if you want to do multiplayer, I recommend you do the four unit uh, thing where you can invite other players. And typically this is best because if you're doing it by yourself, you cannot have several times the, um, the best unit for a raid, so because you can only have one of each units. But if you're doing it multiplayer, then you um, you can have four times the same unit, so it uh, can lead to better team synergy. Uh, but also you're dependent on other players not screwing up, so there's that. Um, so for this time, let's just go into solo play, and what you'll see is you create a room with the same settings as multi-rooms. It's basically a multi uh, type of gameplay. Uh, even if you're doing it by yourself, like I'm doing now. Um, so I'm going to create the room. And then when we're in, well, you get to bring your multi-team. And these are multi-teams. They're not... I named this one Raid specifically because that's what I'm doing. But these are all the teams that I have set up for uh, the multiplayer game mode. So you have this and then you can embark. Uh, these orbs there are Raid orbs. They are what you need to get into a Raid battle. Um, you have five of those whenever the day begins, and then they regenerate at a rate of one an hour. Uh, you can also use potions and vision orb to restore them, uh, the same way that you use um, potions for arena orbs, uh, except that they're specific potions for raids. Um, but the interesting thing is, the first time you challenge a boss doesn't cost you an orb. Uh, so if you can kill them in one run, it doesn't cost you anything. If you kill them in two runs, you're going to have to use one sphere in the end. And if you take more than one run, well, for every attempt you do at the same boss, uh, it's going to cost you one extra orb. So um, on this one, I'm actually going to do uh, a run because there's a couple things that I want to show you in game. Uh, so yeah, fail to real file. That's not very important. So I'm running this uh, in a multiplayer room, but I'm by myself. Uh, but like most multiplayer rooms, I'm going to have a time left for each of my turns. Right, Odo wasn't turned on, so I'm going to turn it on. So I have a time to act. Uh, be sure, if you're playing it manually, to not wait too long. And then the other thing is, there's a maximum amount of actions in-game. Uh, every time one of your character takes a turn, even if they're dead, it takes one action away. So a raid is not just about being able to kill the boss. It's about being able to kill the bust within a time limit. And if you can't kill him before your actions run out, well, he's going to keep the amount of HP he had when your run ended for the next run. Now, the way my team is set up, I'm able to kill him in one run. It's actually the first time that I'm able to create an auto team for a raid uh, that's able to kill him completely. Uh, that has the distinct advantage that since I'm never using raid orbs, because I'm always killing him on the first run, I can technically farm this forever, uh, as long as I want to you know, put more time into the game. Uh, but if you do need more than one, uh, you're going to use orbs, and then there will be a limit to how many you can do in a day, just because of the, uh, the raid orbs. And if you're going for a plus five piece of equipment, you do not need to have perfect runs like this. With uh, 20, uh, 24 runs a day, uh, you do end up having enough materials for building a plus five um, piece of equipment. And I'm sharing this from my experience from previous raids where I could not do this. It's actually the first time I could set an auto team that can beat the raid. So when you beat it, you get some rewards for actually attempting the run, uh, but also some rewards for defeating it, which is what we're going to be getting right now. So give it the game a second, there we go. And I have a bonus points here uh, that I'm gonna talk about in a second. So here, they're my rewards, they're the ones that we previewed when we were looking at rewards for clearing. Um, so overall, about a, th a thousand of those, and then some of the materials needed for the Galmia Cloak. Uh, there we go. So uh, the bonus hints to this section here, which is unit bonus. Some units will give you extra medals and extra victory points. Uh, victory points are only used to measure ranking, so it's how high you'll rank, and as I mentioned previously, don't stress on that. It's not a very important thing. Uh, the medals, though, are nice, so if you can use some of these bonus units in your team, you're getting more rewards for every run, and thus it'll be easier to get all the materials you need for the raid equipment. 
Uh, in this team, I'm using LCRL, which gives me plus 30%. Uh, similar to arena teams, if you run several bonus units, you're not getting uh, more points. So it's only the highest amount uh, from a single character. So maximum is plus 50% metal rewards. Again, only the metals. So this will not increase the materials that you get aside from that. Uh, so it's not a big deal, really, if you don't use a bonus unit. I would recommend getting a better team that makes runs smoother uh, over trying to go for the bonuses. So that's it for the, uh, the basic raid. Uh, and then some other thing you can do is join other people's rooms. So as I was mentioning before, there is a multiplayer function. And uh, if I'm doing a multiplayer function, then there needs to be a way to join other people's rooms. And that's done through the reinforcements tabs right here. So if I click on it, I'll see a lot of other people that have their runs and that are ready to go. Um, now, I don't want to do one with you guys, but I will point out that the quick search function here is pretty good because you have the option to split it by raid level. So I, I was mentioning before that you want to aim for 61 and over. Ideally, if your team is strong enough, 91 and, and over. So you can actually do that to uh, make sure that you get the room you want. So here it's going to uh, sort them out. And if it finds one, it puts me in the team automatically. Uh, now. Uh, similar to uh, solo runs, uh, when you're doing multiplayer raids, uh, the first run is free, as you were seeing. In multiplayer runs, you get 20 free uh, first attempts a day. Yeah, that might be confusing. So, in multiplayer, uh, you get a free first run, but only for the, 20 fr uh, ti uh, the 20 first times that you help somebody uh, in a day. After that, even your first attempts are going to cost you a norm. So there's a limit to how many um, times you can join someone else's raid for free, uh, even if it's still the first attempt. And that's not true for single player. Single player, you can clear 100 raids a day. If you clear them in one go, it will never cost you a norm. Uh, multiplayer, only the first 20. Another thing I want to point out is uh, when you're joining a multiplayer room, even if you don't completely clear the boss, uh, don't join the same room again, you don't have to, because when this boss will be defeated by this player, even if it's with another uh, batch of players, everyone will get the uh, rewards for winning, so you'll eventually get those in your reward box anyways. Uh, so you don't have to win uh, when you're joining someone else. Uh, please be considerate and perform the best you can, uh, because it's nice and it's how the community should do. Uh, but your rewards in the end will be there when this player, uh, the owner of the, of the raid, defeats it, uh, even if it's uh, in his fourth attempt down the line. All right, so the final thing I want to say about raid is I want to talk about the special raid. Uh, while you are raiding, we've seen this time Diabolos is the featured raid. Uh, but there is a rare raid option that happens. Once in a while, when you proc new raid encounters, you're going to get an other alternative raid, the, which are the rare raids. And these, in this event, is going to be the, uh, the pink flan, uh, but they're different every time. And these raids have different stats and require different characters to fight them. Uh, so you, uh, you need to prefer, prepare differently to, to fight them. And uh, these rare raids only range from level 1 to level 10, but the rewards you get for defeating them are much greater than other characters. And just like the main raid, the first time you defeat one, he's going to be level 1, second time level 2, all the way to level 10. Um, so this uh you should really be aiming to defeat those when you can because they're much stronger and give much more rewards than the regular one so if we take a look at the victory rewards like we did earlier these are for the normal raids but if i look at the rare raid uh you can tell he's giving out up to 12 of those and uh the main uh like level 100 diabolos gives you three uh so it's a lot more really than what you'd get in a normal raid um, and there's a technique to try to fight more of those if you're going to play these manually. And if you go into reinforcements, and you use the quick search function that I was using earlier, uh, and you search it for raids between 1 and 10, well, you can end up uh, fighting raids for players who are just starting out their own raid. But you also have a pretty good chance of landing on one of the uh, flans, because uh, when everybody's raids are leveled, you'll eventually find one of them. 
Now, it doesn't work every time. You can have to search several times before, before it happens. Uh, typically, when I was doing that, it took three to five minutes for every run. So it is rather time consuming, but it is a trick that you can use uh, that gets you rare raids back to back. So better rewards for your time. Um, so I think that's all there is to say about raiding, really. It's a quite time-consuming activity, so if you don't want to spend too much time, I recommend trying to set a auto team that can fight the raid the best uh, your account can provide you, and then going with that. And every single raid is different. Diabolos, for example, is weak to Light and Slash, uh, so there are ways to fight them, but typically uh, the same basis will apply where you want units that share damage types and ideally elements so that you can build chains and then hit the boss for the highest amount uh, several times before he gets a turn. Uh, that's really the main way to clear raids, and depending on what this specific boss is weak to, you'll use different characters from one raid to the other. Uh, so that's it. In this raid, as you've seen in the run we did before, we were using light slashing chains with a side of Sakura because I've experience figured out that she worked better than my other lower level light slashing options. So with all that said, uh, that was a pretty long overview of uh, the raid mechanic, uh, but if you needed to figure it out and know all the details of it, I think I got you covered. Uh, if you have any questions or if I forgot to mention anything, please let me know. I'll be very happy to answer your questions and possibly do an update to uh, in another video. Uh, so that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day and uh, thank you for watching.